Darius Geis is a very interesting case. He was one of my favorite college football running backs ever, and I've always wanted to make a video about him. But I couldn't make a Rise video on him because he was struggling in the NFL, and I couldn't make a What Happened to video either because everyone knows he had injuries that were holding him back. Now that he has recently been released by the Redskins, I can finally make a video about him. I did not want him to have to get in trouble in order to make a video about him, but here's my chance and I'm going to take it. Today we will be talking about his journey to LSU, his time with the Tigers, and his short career with the Redskins, and what ultimately may end his NFL career. I want to shed light on his incredible story and how we can all learn from his mistakes. You may want to peg Darius as a bad guy, but you need to understand what he went through and realize everyone makes mistakes before you write him off. First though, if you love college football, then this is definitely a channel for you as I make videos all the time and you won't want to miss out on any more content. So be sure to subscribe and help me reach 6,000 subscribers by the end of August. Let me know who I should do next and turn on post notifications so you never miss another upload. Now let's get started with what happened to Darius Geis. Darius grew up in the heart of the Bayou Territory as he was born and raised in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. From a young age, he was an athlete and loved the game of football. Life wasn't exactly easy for Darius growing up though. He grew up in an area referred to as the Bottom, which was a bad neighborhood that was plagued with crime and poverty. Things did not get any easier for him as when he was a boy, his father was murdered at a local Denny's restaurant after an argument and Darius found out about it on the news. From then on, he channeled his energy into football and ran with a style he liked to call running angry. He told his dad he wanted to play for LSU one day and he was determined to, fill, and he was determined to fulfill that promise he made to him. He said he felt scared, angry, and worried for his life when he was at home, so the football field became a place of refuge for him. When it was time for high school ball, his mother didn't want him going to McKinley High School as she didn't want him to be a part of the culture there. Darius and his three friends were all good at football and managed to get a scholarship to the predominantly white school in the area known as Catholic High. For the first time in his life, Geis and his three friends were bullied horribly and they experienced true racism. Apparently all three of them, especially Darius, came home every night crying and he begged his mom to let him transfer. He wanted to leave so badly, but his mother told him something that would then change his life. She asked him how many kids from his neighborhood got the opportunity to go to a good school, especially on scholarship. From that moment on, Darius realized he was blessed with an opportunity to bring him and his mom out of poverty, so he literally took it and ran with it. As a junior, he got really close with a white guidance counselor named Stephanie, who also grew up in poverty. She helped him after a gang-related fight that left him unconscious, and she basically took Darius in. He likes to compare it to the blind side. The school told her she needed to spend less time with him or she would lose her job. She picked helping him over her job, and luckily she was never fired though. Now, Darius was playing for his murdered father, his hardworking mom, his friends, and the counselor that helped him. He wasn't going to let anyone down. He would become an absolute beast on the football field as he blossomed into one of the best running back recruits in the country. He became a five-star recruit and was ranked as the second best back in the country behind Damian Harris. After his senior season in which he ran for 1,100 yards and 13 touchdowns despite injuries, he was named to the all Metro team and got an invite to the Army All-American game. Geis went off in the Army All-American game and was actually so good that he was named the MVP of the event. Clearly, he was a star, but where was he going to go to school? Well, just like he promised his dad, LSU was going to be in the mix. He ended up committing to the Tigers over the likes of Texas, Tulane, and Alabama, and he was also a track star. His recruiting ranking did dip a little bit, as by the end of it, according to 24-7 Sports, he was rated as a four-star recruit, the number two running back, and the 45th best player in the class of 2015. Darius had made it. His journey wasn't perfect by any means, but he was now going to be playing football for one of the nation's premier programs. Going into the 2015 season, LSU was going into their 11th season under head coach Les Miles, and the Tigers were projected to compete for the SEC West. Brandon Harris was the quarterback, former five-star recruit Leonard Fournette was the running back, and Malachi Dupree and Travin Durall were the wideouts. Geis was the third running back on the team behind Darrell Williams, but he was still going to play. They were, supposed to open the, they were supposed to open up the season against McNeese State, but the game kept going into weather delay, and it was ultimately canceled, and LSU would only play 11 games in 2015. Their next matchup was against number 25 Mississippi State, and they won that game in a thriller. Geis didn't appear in a game until they played number 18 Auburn. Against the Tigers, Geis ran the ball six times for 55 yards. Not bad. He played sparingly against Eastern Michigan and Syracuse, and finally scored his first career touchdown against South Carolina. 
In that game, he also ran for 161 yards and showed his true potential. After wins over number 8 Florida and a good Western Kentucky team, the Tigers were 7-0 and ranked number 5 in the country. College game day came to Tuscaloosa for the Tide showdown with the Tigers and Alabama would win 30-16. Geist didn't appear in the game and the inability to beat Bama is what would ultimately cost Les Miles his job. After the Bama loss, they dropped the game to Arkansas at home and then on the road against number 25 Ole Miss. The season had quickly fallen apart and they finished the year with a win against Texas A&M. They got a bid to play in the Texas Bowl where they easily beat Texas Tech. As a true freshman, Geist ran the ball 51 times for 436 yards and 3 touchdowns. That was really solid for him and he had a lot of potential. Going into 2016, the Tigers were super hyped up as they began the year ranked number 5 in the country. They had both quarterbacks Brandon Harris and Purdue transfer Danny Etling, and Danny would end up winning the job and Harris would later transfer to North Carolina. They opened up the season at Lambeau Field against Wisconsin and they lost in a thriller. In that game, Geist ran the ball for 3 yards and the seat under Les Miles began to heat up. They would beat Jacksonville State where Geist went for 155 yards and then Mississippi State before a road matchup with Auburn. The Tigers would lose that game and Les Miles was fired. Ed Orgeron was named the interim head coach and their matchup was against Missouri. I remember this game very clearly as Geist went off for 163 yards and 3 touchdowns against my Tigers and that's when I became a fan and that's, beca and that's honestly when I became a fan of Geist and his talent. He would go for 162 more yards against Southern Miss the following week. And then they beat number 23 Ole Miss before a showdown with number 1 Alabama. In Coach O's first crack at the Tide, they lost 10-0. Darius would erupt for 252 yards and 2 touchdowns against number 25 Arkansas, and he was a young star. He ran for 83 yards in their heartbreaking loss to Florida, where Geist was stopped at the goal line on the final play. He finished the year with 285 yards and 4 touchdowns against Texas A&M, and not only had Geist become a truly a young superstar, but he broke the record for rushing yards in a game in LSU history. The Tigers got a bid to play against Louisville in the Citrus Bowl, and he ran for 138 yards and a touchdown in their dominating win. As a sophomore, Geist broke out as he ran for 1,387 yards and 15 touchdowns as he was named to the All-SEC first team as a backup to Leonard Fournette. I gotta say it again, a backup to Leonard Fournette. With Fournette now in the NFL, it was going to be Geist's team, and he was expected to potentially become the best running back in college football. They decided to keep Coach O around, and Danny Etling was back for his senior year. Geist went for 122 yards and a touchdown in their Week 1 win over BYU, and then 102 yards and two touchdowns in their win over Chattanooga. Unfortunately, he suffered a leg injury and he would be limited the next few games. He kind of bounced back against Florida with 50 yards, and he helped them beat the number 17 Gators. Two weeks later, he went off against Ole Miss with 276 yards and a touchdown. He became the first player in SEC history to rush for over 250 yards in three career games. They lost to Alabama once again, and then Geis went for 147 yards and three touchdowns against Arkansas. They beat Tennessee, and then they finished the regular season when they win against Texas A&M to go 9-3 on the year. They were matched up with Notre Dame in the Citrus Bowl, and they lost a close game despite 98 yards from Geis. After rushing for 1,251 yards and 11 touchdowns, Darius was named to the SEC's all-second team despite struggling with an injury all season long. Geist not only escaped poverty, but he was now on the fast track to becoming an NFL star. He left after his junior year and was one of the top running back prospects in the 2017 NFL Draft. He was supposed to be a first round pick, but apparently character issues were raised and he was rumored that he got in a verbal altercation with an executive from the Philadelphia Eagles. Because of that, he fell to the second round where he was taken by the Washington Redskins with the 59th overall pick. Geist joined a running back group that included Samaj P. Ryan, Adrian Peterson, and Chris Thompson, but he would never get a chance to compete as he tore his ACL in their, in their first preseason game and he was unfortunately put on injured reserve. He rebounded and rehabbed going into 2019 and was pegged as a guy who could break out. As a fan, Redskins people loved him as he was apparently very popular on Twitter and he'd play video games and he would live stream and play video games with his fans. He had an okay debut, but of course he injured his meniscus and was going to miss some time. He returned in November and had a game where he went for 129 yards and 2 touchdowns, but he got dealt another bad hand as he injured his MCL and was done for the year. After two years, Geis had spent almost all of his time on the bench with injuries and his time was running out. He was supposed to get one more chance this upcoming season, but that went out the window after news surfaced this weekend. Character issues had always been an issue for Darius because of what happened to him as a kid, 
and I think his anger finally got the best of him. He has gotten in trouble for three domestic violence situations and was recently charged with three counts of assault, a charge of battery, and destruction of property. Geist turned himself in and will now await his legal fate. The Redskins wasted no time in releasing him from the team, and it now looks like his football career is obviously done. Without even waiting to hear what happened, the Redskins released him and assumed the worst. Geist claims that he did nothing wrong and will go to court to prove it. This makes me think that the Redskins are trying to do everything they can to avoid more bad PR and the fact that Geis was already on a short leash to begin with. I believe that Darius likely made some mistakes in those times, but I'm not going to assume anything until the trial is over and the case concludes. I really hope the best for Darius, as he seems like a genuinely good guy who is just haunted by his past. Everyone in life deserves a second chance and the ability to learn and grow from their mistakes. I hope Darius gets his life back on track, and maybe someday he will take the field again. He was one of my favorite college football players of all time, and really made me love the sport even more. It's sad that his truly inspiring success story has to end like this, but it doesn't have to end like this, as there are more chapters in his life. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video, it has definitely been one of my favorites to make, and I would really appreciate it if you guys would smash that like button, and let me know what you think down in the comment section below. If you are new, be sure to subscribe to the channel and help me reach 6,000 subs by the end of August. If you are still here though, be sure to check out my video about the rise of Justin Jefferson and all my other What Happened To videos. I hope you guys have a great day, and until next time, peace.